What's up, peeps? Mike Vapes here. Today we're going to be having a look at the UL Caliburn. Screw it. Thesis, what do you think? What's good, YouTube? It is your boy Nas, aka Thesis himself, from Vaping with Thesis Sass. Right, God bless it. Now, look. Mm, bitches, it's the back of a box. It's not what I meant to do. In fact, I meant to do this. Schwager Labs, right in your face. We got the Caliburn by UL. Um, real quick, this was sent out, I think, from UL. Or from Motofo. I don't know who the parent company is in this situation. Some people's kids, you feel me? Bitch, it's okay, smother truck. Now, with that being said, fuck the small truck. Let's go and get into the Kelly burn. Mm. What up, the cock waffles and the peep game, son? Today, we've got the Caliburn by UL. Now, real quick, I just want to touch on the name. Who the fuck names a shit Caliburn after all these wildfires going on for the past, like, I don't know, decade, five years, nothing but California just burned into the fucking ground? Let's go ahead and name our shit Caliburn. Mm, good idea. This is going to be a short one. This one doesn't have too much special about it. I don't necessarily get all the hype that's been surrounding the specific setup. But with that said, uh, we did end up by getting two. One for the Patreon page to give away on a Monday Live and then one for review. So real quick before we continue, this episode is brought to you by Broke Dick, Magnum specifically. I don't know if Magnum's released yet, it's just basically an extra flavor shot, and I do have the regular version. I'm gonna tell you right now, fuck the regular version, the Magnum Payday, this one specifically, but the Magnum in general. The overage of flavor that I'm getting out of this liquid is perfect for any of the devices that have been muted. So I'll give you a good example. The Inican DV has a little bit on the muted side for a pod system, but this inside the Inican DV has been magnificent. So with that said, huge shout out to Broke Dick, <laughs> I can't take myself seriously with that shit. With that said, my ninja kitties, let's go ahead and move forward, son. Mm. So we're gonna go ahead and fist this bitch like that. Sometimes you gotta... Come, come the... Seriously? Oh, she's toy like a toy girl. That who swag back fuckers. We got Manuel, this one right here. We got Manuel Hernandez, Manuel Martinez, Manuel Rodriguez, Manuel Anderson. That doesn't match. Put that there. Of course, we got the do not eat content. I always feel like somebody's watching me. That's not true. I always feel like that this shit says do not eat because it's got magical powers. And the only reason why they don't want you to eat it is because they don't want you to be on their level. <laughs> You feel me? I think someone's not saying some shit. I'm just saying. Now this is, of course, already preloaded with liquid because I've already been using this for about a week and a half, two weeks. And I'm in love with the with the flavor. The flavor on this is, I can't believe I'm about to say this. The flavor on this specific pod system is up there with smock. Now I know that that's not a very good comparison nine times out of 10. Smock quality sucks, the longevity sucks, all sorts of shit. But the one thing that smock has been doing correctly for a little while now, about eight months, the quality of their flavor, like their coils have been top notch the novo the nord the fucking trinity which is basically a nord in a different suit all of that stuff the, the coils have been flawless in terms of flavor so with that said that's kind of the benchmark as to where i'm going to put it this right here has some of the best flavor i've used on a pod system specifically in this form in a long time let's go and pop the top i'll show you guys what the reservoir looks like two milliliters this is rocking around 1.2 ish ohms pop this top just like that oh come on you motherfucker three holes this middle one's going to be your air inlet this is where you suck out through it's the chimney directly on the coil now this is a regular cotton coil see how white that is that's absolutely gorgeous that's flawless that's what i want to see i want that cotton to stay as clean for as long as possible which is weird because my jewel mint that i rock in this is not a clean liquid it actually fucks coils up pretty quick see how yellow that is that's brand new once this is steeped or inside of a pod generally speaking it gets like dark brown within a week not even now my favorite part about the reservoir in terms of refilling is the fact that it's got the air outlet whichever one you want to use pop this in there and it fits perfectly it's almost like they took their time in designing the shit and thought about it before they did it that's something i love to see inside of r&d when you take your time you tend to come up with ideas like that pop this back on just like that swag of lumps and she does not click but you do feel it being nice and snug after that we pop this into this 11 watt device like that bam and then you push it down the rest of the way now my favorite part about this that is kind of unnecessary is the button i love the fact that there's a fire button one two three four five that's going to be off one two three four five that's going to be on. Green is your full charge, and of course it goes down the scale in terms of color once the battery is depleted. With that said, it is a fairly small battery running around 520 milliamp hour, but I'll tell you what, this has better overall battery life than 9 out of 10 pod systems I've come across, especially the ones that have 1,000 milliamp hour. I'll only get 3 to 4 hours, 3 to 5 hours, sometimes 6 if I'm really being nice to it. This, I've been able to go all day, 8 to 12 hours total, and that's me using it pretty excessively, not like non-stop, but fairly excessively. I'll go ahead and show you guys a hit real quick mm. beautiful 
absolutely gorgeous. Now you can probably tell by the way I'm taking those hits, it's not a complete MTL. Now this is a little bit bothersome specifically because it's a pod system and to me I do want to see pod systems be tight. This is not tight. If you like something that's a loose MTL or a, an extremely restricted direct to lung, that would be this. Now one of my favorite parts about there being a button is the fact that I can preheat the coil, but that's not necessary with the Caliburn. Something I'm really impressed by is the fact that it's only 11 watts, 3.2 to 4 volts, and of course it has that curve. Once it's fully charged, it's going to be a little bit more powerful than say midway through the day. But with that said, since the resistance is so high, it needs less power. It doesn't require as much power to heat up that Canthal like something like the Trinity where it's got three settings or something like the Orion where it's got multiple settings because of the multiple resistances you're able to use. So again, this is fairly powerful. It feels fairly powerful for it being 11 watts. The hits are very warm in comparison to something that's similar powered. I'm not 100% sure how accurate that 11 watt rating is, but again, 11 watts simply because of the higher resistance is, is definitely more than enough power. Now, if you look inside the internals, you see two magnets, one on your right, one on your left, as well as two spring-loaded brass contacts. Now, my favorite part about this entire device, please, every other company that sees this, take a second to look. What do you not see? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with leakage. You don't see any leakage. Very, very minimal amounts of liquid right there between those two contacts. This is something that I do look for. If there is liquid at the bottom of a pod system, especially anything that's over a half a mil or a quarter of a mil, that shit is useless to me. I don't trust there being a bunch of liquid in the bottom of my electronics. It's just not something I'm willing to use. Don't fucking come at me with some garbage like that. And then you look at the bottom right here and you've got two opposing magnets and then of course your contacts. Now here's something that I haven't seen anyone talk about. About. When I see contacts that are at a point, so like you have this, it's almost like a, a cone shape. I would expect there to be an inverse shape right there to essentially accept those contacts. That's not something you see here. Now, if in that was the case, I feel like we would get a better contact, more reliable contact. With that said, I have had a couple of dry fires excuse me, not dry fires, had a couple of misfires whilst going to take a hit. Now that is, or that can be chalked up to this right here. You see the magnets? That essentially pulls it down 90% of the way. The other 10% is on you to be required to push. You do have a window on either side, which at first glance I thought was gonna be useless because it is dark inside there, but that's not the case. If you go ahead and move it, you can actually see the level adjust. And that is something I do appreciate. I do like to be able to see the level of my liquid in any given system, it doesn't matter what it is. Beautiful. Again, I do want to reiterate the flavor on the Cali Burn is absolutely amazing, but it does not live up to the hype that I've seen a lot of other reviewers put into it. A lot of people have been saying this thing is insane, this thing's perfect, it's like the fucking end all be all of pot systems. It's not, it's just not. Let's go and weigh this bad bitch up real quick before I forget. I was just thinking about it because this thing is extremely light, and I do think it because it's an aluminum unibody. Look at that, this thing is so rigid. I am super impressed. Base of it, of course, is micro USB. 34 grams is definitely enough to let you know that there's quality into it, but it's not so light where you think it's cheap. You feel me? I like that kind of stuff. It does have that elongated body shape, though, so in your pocket, you will notice it's there. I can't believe I forgot to open up the other box. This is like Christmas. Pop this here like that. What do we get? Schwega lumps. A cable and another pod. I want to go back to the beginning where I had said how long these things have lasted. This right here, the proof is in the pudding. I got this about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and not only have I not needed this extra pod, but I'm going to include this with the other giveaway with the blue one. This flavor is just as good right now as it was the day that I used it. I cannot believe they've gotten away with this much flavor on just a regular cotton and canthal type coil. Now, of course, the way that you could fire this is pretty obvious. Button or by pressure switch. If you look right here, you see this little nipple, that plastic nipple. That is your pressure switch. Again, I always advise if you're gonna have a pod system with a pressure switch or with a draw activation switch, you're gonna wanna make sure that there's no liquid and that there's no dust, debris, or anything along those lines inside of that hole. That will cause an auto fire and or a short. You don't wanna see that. The draw on this thing is, it's a hair trigger. You can just barely put your lips on this bitch and it will start firing. That to me is a very high quality pressure switch. I like that a lot. Bitch, it's okay, some other truck is done with that. So let's go and Get back to regular view, son. Mm. My final submission is this. The Kelly Burn by Uwell is a great pod system. Here's the deal, is they missed out on a really good opportunity. They have an extremely powerful battery, extremely powerful wattage, 3.2 to what, four? Some shit like that, with a really, really solid fucking pod, or with a really solid coil, rather. Vertical coil, cotton-based, Super snazzy, easy to make, and it's inexpensive on their end. It's also inexpensive on our end, which is always a good thing, but the flavor is fucking just, mm, 
The problem is, is that the, the MTL status is not what I would consider to be a full-blown tight MTL. It's MTL, it's not a direct to lung per se, although it could be an extremely uh, uh, a restricted direct to lung. Phenomenal. It's getting great vapor production. This is the same pod that I've had since day one. I have not used the other one. I haven't had no need to. Simply put, like, I, it's been sitting in this box the whole time. I'm like, I'm not gonna rock a fresh pod. I'm just not going to. So the best part about this device, in my opinion, is by far and away the, the pressure switch is one of the most sensitive pressure switches I've ever used in any pod system. I would not recommend this to, uh, from someone who's transitioning from cigarettes to vaping, only because it's not a complete MTL. It's not that, it's not a restricted hit. Granted, it, it's something like this, like the Smock Slim that I just reviewed, is by far and away the tightest version of an MTL that I've ever used and it's not it's not great either. You don't want it to be too tight. And I know it's really difficult trying to get that in-between stage. And that's why I keep suggesting to these companies, look, this is free advice from someone who's a consumer as well as a reviewer. And I see, I go through, you know, tons, hundreds and hundreds of devices a year. Find a way to make the airflow adjustable. And that way you can mitigate some of the problems people have with either A2 loose or A2 tight. It's that simple. You're gonna be able to cover your bases much more. You're actually gonna be able to sell a lot more pods to a lot more people, much larger demographic. You guys understand sales. So the adjustable factor to me is key. It's what's gonna make or break any given product. I've seen all of the hype attached to this device. I personally don't subscribe to the hype. Mm, it's great. It's a great device, but like I was expecting the second coming type shit when I got this in the mail. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna fucking love it. It's good. It's a good device. I keep saying the word great. It's not great. It's a good solid device. Good platform. It looks, you know, reminiscent of any given pod system like a jewel or uh, anything along those lines. Let's go and take another puff. This time I'm gonna go ahead and preheat with the button. Yeah, that final draw at the end is still being direct to lung. It's definitely not a full blown MTL. This is how long I can hit it with an MTL. Whereas if I take a hit of my K-Fun or even this bad boy, the Whirl, in my humble opinion, is a much better MTL and it just got as good a flavor as this bad boy, by the way. It's not a pod system per se, it's a all-in-one with a very deceptive portion on top. I thought it was a tank and it's not. Let's go and take a hit from this. Oh my good God, much tighter. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down some. So in my opinion, if I was gonna recommend one or the other, at the end of the day, the world's a better product. Now they do offer solid colors, all that kind of good stuff. Fuck that, y'all don't wanna hear about colors. I wanna know about performance, right? You can make whatever shit you want a different color. Fucking use a Sharpie. Now what thesis is patented finger of capability scale, I'm gonna say this is a solid 6.7, 6.8, creeping up to a seven. It's it's above average, but it's, you know, it, it's, it's very, mm, it's a little bit lackluster in terms of the hit, the flavor, phenomenal, do not get me wrong. The longevity of the coils, extremely impressive. And the flavor today is at a seven, whereas in the beginning it was a 10. That's a phenomenal coil, if you ask me. Bitch, it's okay, some other truckers. Now with that being said, I wanna tell y'all that I appreciate y'all for vaping with Thesis. It is your boy Thesis, I'm out. Mm. And I will always mediocrely love you. Yeah.